Welcome to Rehis Food Hygiene. This is an introduction to the food hygiene course. So Rehis is the Royal Envir So Rehis is the Royal Environmental Health Institute of Scotland and this is an elementary course of food hygiene and it is 5 SVQ and it is 5 SVQ credit points. So the whole course is, we'll start off with an introduction to food hygiene, then we'll go on to bacteria and their characteristics. In the third lesson will be on incidences of food poisoning and its prevention. Personal hygiene and the working habits of the food handler will be next. Then it'll be working environment, that's the hospitality industry. And then we've got common food pests and their control. We've finish off with cleaning practices and then HACCP which is hazard analysis critical control point and food safety legislation. There will be an assessment at the end of it, it's a multiple choice and you need 60% to gain a pass. To show progress today, you should be able to explain what is meant by food safety. You should know the terms of food poisoning, foodborne illness. You should know the terms of food poisoning, foodborne infection, food contamination, and food safety hazards. And you should be able to recognise the benefits of high standards of food hygiene. We're going to be learning about the benefits of food. Uh, we're going to be learning about the benefits of high standards of hygiene within the food industry and explaining what is meant by food safety. The disadvantages and costs of poor hyg hygiene standards within the food industry, the role of the employer and employee in maintaining these standards. The terms food poisoning, foodborne infection, food contamination, and food safety hazards. And then the last one will be the incidences of food related illnesses within Scotland over the five years, over the last 10 years. And the fifth one will be on the incidence of food related illnesses within Scotland over the previous 10 years. So what do you know about food hygiene? Food poisoning usually occurs within 1 to 36 hours of eating contaminated food eh, or poisonous food. Food poisoning usually occurs within 1 to 36 hours of eating contaminated or poisonous food. Some symptoms normally last from 1 to 7 days and include one or more of the following. Abdominal pain, that's a real cramping in your stomach. Diarrhea, vomiting, feeling sick or nausea, fever, dehydration or collapse. Every day, thousands of people in the UK suffer from food poisoning. Many of these will be very ill and some of them will die. And the most at risk include very young people, babies and infants, so very young, pregnant women and their unborn babies, elderly people and sick people and people with weakened immunity, those who have just come out of hospital and things like that. So sick people and people with weakened immunity, the elderly, pregnant women and unborn babies and babies and infants, very young people. The main reason for food poisoning are negligence. The main reasons for food poisoning are 
negligence, ignorance, poor management, poor safety culture, failure to implement food practices, effective and failure to implement food practices. Effective instruction and training will prevent food poisoning if the good practices of food handlers are taught and implemented in the workplace. Ten of the main faults contributing to food poisoning outbreak include preparing food too far in advance and storing it at room temperature. This is what we would have called time temperature abuse. Cooling food too slowly before refrigerating. It needs 90 minutes to be down before below. It needs to be below 5 degrees within 90 minutes. Not reheating food high to high enough temperatures to destroy to destroy not reheating the food to high enough temperatures to destroy food poisoning bacteria it needs to be reheated to above 82 degrees centigrade it needs to be reheated to above 83 degrees centigrade buying food from an unre Buying food from an unreliable supplier and sources which are contaminated with food poison bacteria. Undercooking the food, i.e. it's not gone up to 75 degrees. Not thawing frozen poultry to, for a sufficient time. Not, thaw, not thawing frozen poultry for a sufficient time. Cross-contamination from raw food to ready-to-eat food. Eating contaminated raw food such as bean sprouts, shellfish, eggs or milk. Storing hot food below 63 degrees. Hot food should be held above 63 degrees and also for a minimum. And also hot, hot food should be stored above 63 degrees and should be stored for a maximum of 90 minutes an hour and a half. And the last one fault is unhygienic and infected food handlers. A hazard is the potential to cause harm to the con. A hazard is the potential to cause harm to the consumer. Contaminants can be introduced into food during preparation process of the food, and those main hazards are microbial. Physical, chemical and allergenic. So there's four hazards. Microbiology, microbiological hazards such as bacteria, viruses, moulds and parasites. Physical hazards are things that are physically in the food that you can see or feel. So physical could be things like glass, stones, hair, plasters, chips of your false nails or chips of nail varnish. Chemical could be things like pesticide and cleaning chemicals, bleach, detergent, bleach or detergent. And allergenic are anything that can cause an anaphylactic shock that the consumer is allergic to. Things such as peanuts, tree nuts, sesame seeds, eggs, milk and a few others. Food hygiene is more than just cleanliness. It also includes all practices, obtaining food from a reliable and approved source. For the school, we would use Tesco. That's approved. Protecting food from contamination. That's the job of the, the cook. Preventing bacteria multiplying. That's also the job of the cook and those who are serving the food. Destroying any, harmful destroying any harmful bacteria, that only gets destroyed with cooking and only above 75 degrees or if you're reheating it above 82 degrees and throwing away unfit or contaminated food.
there is a cost to poor there is a cost to poor food hygiene. Food poisoning outbreaks and sometimes death can be occurred. Poor food hygiene can cause food poisoning outbreaks and sometimes death. It can cause food contamination and customer complaints. From there you get brand damage and loss of trade and a poor reputation. You could end up with pest infestation. Waste of food due to spoilage. That then costs the business money. A closure of business or a prohibition of processes by the local authority. Fines and legal costs resulting from legal action. Civil action from ill or annoyed customers. Poor morale and often high t- turnover of staff. Poor morale and often high turnover of staff. And lower, po- and lower profits. These are all costs from poor food hygiene and they can all be prevented. If a business loses money, Employers may lose overtime, bonuses, and they may even lose their jobs. It's it's in everyone's best interest to observe the highest standards of food hygiene. Now the benefits of good hygiene Now the benefits of good food hygiene and safety is you can get satisfied customers, you get a good reputation and you increase your business and brand protection. You're in compliance with the food safety laws. There's less food wastage and an increased shelf life of food that increases profits. Good working conditions, you have a higher staff morale and lower staff turner. You Good working conditions, you have a higher staff morale and lower staff turnover, which then increases profit and profitability. And you can have higher profits. These are all benefits from good food hygiene and good food safety. In Scotland, it was estimated that there was 4,000... In Scotland... It's estimated there are 43,000 cases of foodborne illnesses annually. Food poisoning is foodborne. Foodborne in Scotland, it's estimated that there are 43,000 cases of food poisoning or foodborne illnesses annually. And with 5,800 GP presentations and 500, with 5,800 GP presentations and 500 hospital admissions and 500 hospital admissions so what does the law say the law says food handlers must be supervised and instructed and or trained in food hygiene matters commensurate with their work activity this rehas certificate that you are going to be working towards will give you that certificate to say that you have been trained in food hygiene masters. It's recognisable in all Scottish industry. It's recognisable in all hospitality in Scottish industry. And it's recognisable in the hospitality industry in Scotland. So you're responsible to learn about food safety and keep up to date, to control the hazards and practice good food hygiene and to protect customers.